Bob Ross was 52 years old when he died from lymphoma in Orlando, Florida. His company was worth $15 million, and his former business partners wanted it all. When Robert Norman Ross died in 1995, the headline of his New York Times obituary read simply, Bob Ross, 52 dies, was a painter on TV. It was tucked at the very bottom of the page, and it was the only one in the section without a photo. Since then, the Happy Painter's legacy has only grown. Bob Ross method painting instructors now teach throughout the country, and he has a massive base of fans who love his chronic cheerfulness, laid-back attitude, and hypnotic voice in reruns of his long-running public television show, The Joy of Painting. His fame, however, was not so much a product of his artistic talent, which was pioneering in its own right, as it was the result of his golden character. He became a force of goodness that encouraged viewers to believe in themselves. Hi, I'm Bob Ross, and for the next 13 weeks, I'll be your host as we experience the joy of painting. I think each of us, sometime during our life, has wanted to paint a picture. I think there's an artist hid in the bottom of every single one of us. And here we will try to show you how to bring that artist out, to put it on canvas, because you too can paint almighty pictures. And yet, Bob Ross's death was anything but joyful. Bob Ross died on July 4th, 1995, following a brief and unsuccessful battle with cancer. But in the months before his death, he was plagued with legal and personal battles over his will and ownership of his estate. At some points, he was even heard shouting into the telephone from his deathbed. Bob Ross's death was preceded by a happy life. Bob Ross was born on October 29, 1942, in Daytona Beach, Florida. His father was a carpenter, and Bob was more at home in the workshop than school. He dropped out of school in the ninth grade to work as his father's apprentice before joining the Air Force at the age of 18. In 1961, 18-year-old Ross enlisted in the United States Air Force and was put into service as a medical records technician. He rose to the rank of Master Sergeant and served as the first sergeant of the clinic at Elson Air Force Base in Alaska, where he first saw the snow and mountains that later appear as recurring themes in his paintings. He developed his quick painting technique during brief daily work breaks, having held military positions that required him to act tough and mean. The guy who makes you scrub the latrine, the guy who makes you make your bed, the guy who screams at you for being late to work. Ross decided he would not raise his voice when he left the military. An incorrigible optimist, Ross studied under a painter named William Alexander, whose technique of rapidly applying layers of oil paint over each other without waiting for the previous layers to dry was known as wet on wet. And Ross perfected it so masterfully that he was soon able to finish a canvas in under 30 minutes. It turned out that 30 minute paintings was the perfect amount of time for a TV slot, and The Joy of Painting premiered on January 11, 1983. But despite his newfound celebrity status, he always remained a humble and rather private person and devoted much of his time to fostering animals like deer, squirrels, foxes, and owls. That's not to say he was without his vanities. In between tapings, the soft-spoken painter was known to take joy rides around the neighborhood in a fully restored 1969 Chevy Corvette he bought with his newfound wealth. By and large, Ross's life was like the show he put on when he painted in front of the camera, an inspiring story of a good-natured man who followed his dreams and was rewarded for it. Unfortunately, Bob Ross's death turned into an unhappy coda on the life of one of art's most joyful painters. How did Bob Ross die? According to those who know him, Bob Ross always had a feeling he would die young. He had smoked cigarettes for most of his adult life, and by the time he was in his 40s, he had suffered two heart attacks and survived his first battle with cancer. The second, against a rare and aggressive type called lymphoma, would prove too much for him. 
Ross was diagnosed in 1994, around the time he was getting ready to put the last episode of the 31st season of The Joy Painting on tape. Eagle-eyed viewers may notice the once towering and energetic painter looking rather frail in his final televised appearance, though the worst was yet to come. Shortly after leaving television, Ross lost two famous trademarks. His perm fell out and his soothing voice became coarse. His failing health took him out of the joy of painting studio in Muncie, Indiana, and back to his estate in Orlando, Florida. During his final months, he didn't even have the energy to paint. Bob Ross died on July 4th, 1995, in Orlando, not far from where he was born 52 years earlier. His gravestone, located in Woodland Memorial Park, is marked with the words television artist. On most days, his resting place is decorated with paintings left there by visiting students. In life and in death, Ross was a simple man of simple taste. Per request, his funeral was attended by only a few close friends and family members. All who had received an invite were there to show their love to the happy painter. All except two, Ross's former business partners. The Battle Over Bob Ross's Estate By the time Bob Ross died, he was the owner of a massive painting empire. He produced a line of art supplies with his face on the packaging, including palettes, brushes, and easels, as well as instructional booklets. He often taught personal lessons for $375 per hour. By 1995, his business was worth over $15 million. And the battle over the Bob Ross Incorporated Empire began before he had even died. Days before the joy of painting came to an end, his business partner, Walt Kowalski, left him a bone-chilling message. Reporting for the Daily Beast, writer Alston Ramsey referred to this message as a declaration of war, full of legalese and posturing. It had a single purpose, complete ownership over Bob Ross, his name, his likeness, and everything he had ever touched or created. Walt, along with his wife, Annette Kowalski, met Ross when he was still an apprentice, and together they helped the magnetic painter launch his own television series in the 1980s. They had once been so close that Bob Ross wrote in his will that Annette was to be in direct line to administer his estate. But tension began in 1992, when Ross's second wife, Jane, one of four owners of Bob Ross Incorporated, died of cancer. After Jane's death, her share was divided between Ross and his partners. The Kowalskis, who had owned a majority stake in Ross's company ever since, were now waiting for the painter to give up his part of the cut. Steve told the Daily Beast how his father spent his final hours locked in a, quote, steaming hot shouting match with them. But just as Ross could change a painting half a minute before the end of an episode, so too did he make some lightning-quick adjustments to his will. In it, he handed the right of his name and likeness over from Annette to his son Steve, and his estate became the property of his third wife Linda, whom the painter married on his deathbed. The Lasting Legacy of the Happy Painter Though stations continued to air reruns of the Joy Painting for a few more years following Bob Ross's death, the painter and his work slowly began to fade from memory. Before long, he had been reduced to a cherished childhood memory of people who grew up in the 1980s. Then, the age of the internet brought back Ross from the dead. In 2015, Bob Ross Incorporated made a deal with the live streaming service company, Twitch. The television network wanted to launch their brand with a streamable marathon of the joy of painting. The company agreed, and just like that, the happy painter became front page news again. A new generation of people, some of whom were interested in painting, and some of whom just wanted to relax after a long, tiring day, discovered Ross for the first time. Today, 
Ross is more beloved than he ever was. His lasting success is due, in part, to the timelessness of his message. In truth, the joy of painting isn't so much about learning how to paint, as it is about learning to believe in yourself, to trust in others, and to appreciate the beauty of the natural world. I've really enjoyed being with you for the past 13 shows, and I hope to see you again very soon. If you get a chance, stop by Branson, Missouri, and say hello to us. Until next time, I'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting, God bless, and we'll see you soon. And so, Bob Ross lives on, even after his untimely death. If you liked the video, press the like button and subscribe for more videos.